Look at her as she sails through the crying motions. That is a line from one of my favorite poems, titled Silent Desire. Do any of you recognize the poet? I bet not. Surprise! That's me. That is how real poetry is to me. So real that I can't help but to find myself deeply engrossed in it on a daily basis. And you see this line? This is a personification of my current search for something more and my fervent desire for change. Poetry for me has been way more than a record, more than a journal of the sea animal living on land. It has been a calling, a gift, and a passion. This quote speaks of poetry as something out of its element, and I thoroughly disagree with that. If I was to manipulate this quote to my belief of poetry, I would say that poetry is of the learned astronomer. I'm not sure if you would, but anyone catch the Walt Whitman reference? It is of the learned astronomer wandering, no rather seeking through the lands for something more. To me, poetry is in its element and always has been. For the element of poetry is the element of nature. The same way the wind rustles the tree leaves is the same way that poetry rustles the minds of its readers. The same way the sun and moon interchange forming day and night is the same way that poetry interchanges to reflect the hearts and the minds. The same way a bird sings a tune for happiness, sadness or glory, so does poetry sing its tune for change. And yes, Although I do disagree with the beginning line of the quote, I can find a deep meaning that tugged me, especially in the last line of the quote. The line says, poetry is a phantom script, telling how rainbows are made and why they go away. The beginning of this line talks of a phantom script that, that depicts how poetry can take on any shape or form. One of my chosen poems is the perfect embodiment of this. Shockingly, the poem has only five words each that stands alone. It's titled, How to Be a Poet, and I'm sure you can imagine why this hit home with me. It is written by Amy Nezukuma Tato, and it goes as such. Breath, spiders, boxes, eyeliners, thirst. A weird assortment of words be asked me. However, each word has its own meaning that creates an even greater meaning and understanding when put together. My favourite word in the entire poem is boxes. Because when it comes to my own poetry, I rely greatly on boxes. Boxes that I keep deep within me to lock up any emotion that I don't want to deal with at the time. Boxes that used to open without my will in the past. That was until I decided that I will open those boxes and I planned to flood the page with my emotions and with my questions. It was at that very moment that my search for a reason and purpose began. Thanks to that moment, I started seeing things in a way I hadn't been able to before. And thanks to my poetry, I was able to capture my sights onto the page. I began to charge the world head first with my pen. There's a saying I like telling myself and one I created. A blade draws blood whilst the pen strikes thoughts. And in contrast to searching for syllables to shoot at the barriers of the unknown, I'm in search of a sharp enough blade that can cut past the veil of lies so that I can finally see the truth of the world. Poetry is dangerous. It can cause the most passive of people to take, up, to take up arms. It challenges the world and it challenges the right itself. It can cause irreparable harm if unmanaged and even when managed, it can still force the strongest to their knees. That is exactly what Ruth Everson tries to convey to us in her poem, Poetry is Dangerous. In her poem, Ruth Everson says two lines that accurately depict the majority, the majority of my poetry, and as such, when this poem comes to mind, so does, do these lines. Poetry is rebellion, rolling you and the world. Poetry will write your tears in ink. Change is what I seek and I utilize poetry to attempt to bring it. I use my poems to tell why rainbows left and how to bring them back. My pain, my love, my thirst, that is what makes up my poetry and my poetry is what makes up my existence. Look at me as I sail through the crying oceans, 
flutter through the brittle skies and trudge through the muddy lands. Look at me as I yearn for peace, for love, and for mercy. That's my poem. For I am the learned astronomer who seeks through the lands for something more. Thank you.